Hi, my name is Bonnie Poor, I'm Manager of Clinical Services for FRNR and Healthcare Consulting. In this segment, I've been asked to discuss how palliative care services are reimbursed. Beginning with Medicare, the only direct reimbursement for palliative care services is for physician services. The beneficiary must have Medicare Part B. It covers limited treatments and medications, those that uh, are used to provide palliative care by the physician, for instance, a phys physician that may be administering injections or an infusion. Um, it also covers doctors, nurse practitioners, and in very specific criteria, social workers, and that's limited to beneficiaries with a mental illness diagnosis that's found in the DSM-4 diagnosis uh, manual. The services have to be reasonable and necessary for the management of symptoms, um, and it must include a, a diagnosis that supports that type of situation. So unlike most other coding, when we're talking about coding for physician E&M, evaluation and management services for palliative care, we're going to be looking for diagnoses that are symptom-based rather than a, a diagnosis or a condition, which kind of goes against the grain when you're talking to coders because typically they're looking for the diagnosis and not the symptom. But since that is the primary reason for the care, when we are billing for uh, evaluation and management for palliative care, we're going to be looking for what that primary symptom is occurring and what that physician or his support team needs to do for that symptom. Any other medications that are associated with palliative care are going to be billed to the patient's Part D, Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage, or if they have their own individual prescription drug coverage. So again, the medications are very limited. When we're talking about palliative services from a physician, we're not talking about palliative services that are part of the hospice benefit. When we're talking about Medicare A benefits, the palliative care services may be covered as part of the qualifying acute care service. So as long as that patient has been admitted to a Part A type benefit, whether it be a skilled nursing facility, a hospital, a home health agency, and they meet the need for skilled care as defined by Medicare, that it requires that license and the skill of a nurse or a therapist, then along with those skilled criteria, the provider may be including palliative services. But there is not a direct in Part A one-to-one -one relationship, I'm providing palliative services and I'm being reimbursed by Medicare. I'm providing a skill service that meets my coverage in my provider type and I'm providing palliative services. The limitations um, are based on the provider type. So if I'm receiving home health episode of care and meets the Medicare skilled criteria, that individual that's receiving those palliative services within there has to remain homebound. A hospice benefit when I'm uh, providing palliative service, I need to make sure that that patient has a life expectancy of six months or less or foregoing that curative treatment. A skilled nursing facility limitation um, is that that patient must have been in a hospital for three-day three qualifying stay in the last uh, previous 30 days prior to coming to the SNF. And again, meets that Part A skill requirement, and then I can provide the palliative services also. Medicare managed care. The coverage varies all over the place. Um, manage, Medicare managed care uh, in some situations have reimbursement for palliative care, physician consultation only. Some of them will cover a team-based care, um, home-based palliative care, uh, telephonic type of follow-up um, with the palliative care team and the patient, or direct telemedicine where there's units in the home. Uh, there's also incentive payments to hospitals based on palliative care measures by Medicare managed care entities. So if there's palliative care consults, whether there's a for formal program in the hospital, if there's early referrals, those types of things, um, that quality measure uh, is met, then there's incentive payments that may be given to those hospitals. 
Medicare also now has Medicare Choice Model, which is a demonstration project for palliative care. It's very limited. It's limited to, it's going to be limited to 30 hospices. They have not been selected yet. And this model is to enable beneficiaries to receive palliative care through a hospice in this case that's participating in the demonstration and also receive their, their Part A benefits, Part B curative services along with this palliative care demonstration. Um, the restriction here is that the beneficiary must not have previously elected the Medicare hospice benefit. Um, also, the reimbursement to the provider is um, very limited, $400 per month to provide the palliative level care services for them. But this is the first step into Medicare recognizing um, the full Medicare uh, full palliative care uh, full palliative care services and reimbursing directly for those services. Medicare and Medicaid integrated care. Uh, these are the managed care organizations providing coordinated care to patients who have both Medicare and Medicaid. So far, there's been 12 states that have been approved um, by CMS. Their models have been approved by CMS. And the coverage, again, varies from state to state and plan to plan. The 12 states that are currently active are California, Colorado, Illinois, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, Ohio, South Carolina, Texas, Virginia, and Washington. In the state of Illinois, we have the MMAI, Medicare Medicaid Alignment Initiative. Um, their primary goal is to reform the care that's delivered to their clients that are eligible for both Medicare and Medicaid. Um, there is still limited enrollment, but it focuses on the geographic regions in the Chicagoland area and in central Illinois. These are opportunities for providers to propose a palliative care service, a, a formalized plan um, to the uh, contractors, the MCOs, uh, in the state of Illinois and the other states that are participating to show them where they can uh, improve uh, the health care and the outcome of these uh, individuals and also um, save cost to CMS. Some of the additional pairs, the demonstration programs that are out there are predominantly, predominantly structured around one provider receiving some form of capitated payment uh, to provide all the necessary services to that patient. That part of the provider then chooses who will help them care uh, for the patients that are enrolled in their program. And again, their goal is to improve that outcome and to, to have cost savings. So the, the palliative care providers need to be seeking out opportunities. They need to research their areas to see who's involved in any of these type programs and who the so-called gatekeeper is. Uh, for the care of those patients. Some of those demonstration programs are independence at home, patient-centered medical homes, upon accountable care organizations, the bundle payment type uh, pilots. There's other coordinated care programs out there. One that's been in existence for quite a while is um, PACE, which is a program for all-inclusive care of the elderly. Um, it's beginning to expand. It started off small. Um, is predominantly for the frail elderly nursing home uh, adults um, who are usually in the last two or three years of their life, and this is a good opportunity to provide palliative services in those uh, type of programs. Insurance plans, they also vary by plan, but palliative care, if it's covered, is typically covered as part of the plan's hospice or their chronic care benefits. So their beneficiary is eligible for chronic care, their beneficiary is eligible for hospice, and they'll pay through those uh, type of benefits. It could be included also in some of their disease management or case management models, and, and you need to discuss um, with the different insurance plans if it's a possibility that their beneficiaries may be eligible to receive palliative care through those. Uh, we do have some very structured HMOs that are out there. One of them that comes into mind is the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, who has a fully established palliative care program where they reimburse for the services. And then some long-term care insurance plans also have a palliative care benefit. But again, it's up to the provider to have the discussions with the plans to determine if there's any reimbursement for care for their beneficiary.